The reward of service. When thou makest a dinner or a supper, said Christ, call not thy friends nor thy brethren, neither thy kinsmen nor thy rich neighbors, lest they also bid thee again, and a recompense be made thee. But when thou makest a feast, call the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, and thou shalt be blessed, for they cannot recompense thee, for thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. Luke fourteen twelve to 14 In these words, Christ draws a contrast between the self-seeking practices of the world and the unselfish ministry of which he has given an example in his own life. For such ministry he offers no reward of worldly gain or recognition. Thou shalt be recompensed, he says, at the resurrection of the just. Then the results of every life will be made manifest, and every one will reap that which he has sown. To every worker for God this thought should be a stimulus and an encouragement. In this life our work for God often seems to be almost fruitless. Our efforts to do good may be earnest and persevering, yet we may not be permitted to witness their results. To us the effort may seem to be lost, but the Savior assures us that our work is noted in heaven and that the recompense cannot fail. The Apostle Paul, writing by the Holy Spirit, says, Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Galatians 6, 9. And in the words of the psalmist we read, He that goeth forth and weepeth, beareth precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Psalms 126, 6. While the great final reward is given at the Christ's coming, true-hearted service for God brings a reward even in this life. Obstacles, opposition, and bitter heartbreaking discouragements the work will have to meet. He may not see the fruit of his toil, but in the face of all this he finds in his labor a blessed recompense. All who surrender themselves to God in unselfish service for humanity are in cooperation with the Lord of glory. This thought sweetens all toil, it braces the will, it nerves the spirit for whatever may befall. Working with unselfish heart, ennobled by being partakers of Christ's sufferings, sharing his sympathies, they help to swell the tide of his joy and bring honor and praise to his exalted name. In fellowship with God, with Christ, and with holy angels, they are surrounded with a heavenly atmosphere an atmosphere that brings health to the body, vigor to the intellect, and joy to the soul. All who consecrate body, soul, and spirit to God's service will be constantly receiving a new endowment of physical, mental, and spiritual power. The inexhaustible supplies of heaven are at their command. Christ gives them the breath of his own spirit, the life of his own life. The Holy Spirit puts forth his highest energies to work in the heart and mind, then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily. Thou shalt call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. Thy light shall rise in obscurity, and thy darkness be as the noonday. And the Lord shall guide thee continually, and satisfy thy soul in drought, and make fat thy bones. And thou shalt be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water, whose waters fail not. Isaiah 58, 8-11 Many are God's promises to those who minister to his afflicted ones. He says, Blessed is he that considereth the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive, and he shall be blessed upon the earth. And thou wilt not deliver him unto the will of his enemies. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing, that will make all his bed in his sickness. Trust in the Lord, and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Psalms 41, 1-3. Psalm 37, 3. Honor the Lord with thy substance, and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy bonds be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. There is that scattereth, and yet increaseth, and there is that withholdeth more than is meat, but attendeth to poverty. 
He that hath pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord, and that which he hath given will he pay him again. The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. Proverbs 3, 9, 10. Proverbs 11, 24. Proverbs 19, 17. Proverbs 11, 25. While much of the fruit of their labor is not apparent in this life, God's workers have a sure promise of ultimate success. As the world's Redeemer, Christ was constantly confronted with apparent failure. He seemed to do little of the work which he longed to do in uplifting and saving. Satanic agencies were constantly working to obstruct his way, but he would not be discouraged. Ever before him, he saw the result of his mission. He knew that truth would finally triumph in the contest with evil, and to his disciples he said, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. John 16, 33. The life of Christ's disciples is to be like his, a series of uninterrupted victories, not seen to be such here, but recognized as such in the great hereafter. Those who labor for the good of others are working in union with the heavenly angels. They have their constant companionship, their unceasing ministry. Angels of light and power are ever near to protect, to comfort, to heal, to instruct, to inspire. The highest education, the truest culture, the most exalted service possible to human beings in this world are theirs. Often our merciful Father encourages his children and strengthens their faith by permitting them here to see evidences of the power of his grace upon the hearts and lives of those for whom they labor. My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I shall please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. For ye shall go out with joy, and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree, and instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree, and it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Isaiah 55, 8-13 in the transformation of character, the casting out of evil passions, the development of the sweet graces of God's Holy Spirit, we see the fulfillment of the promise, instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree, and instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree. We behold that life's desert rejoice and blossom as the rose. Isaiah 35, 1. Christ delights to take apparently hopeless material those whom Satan has debased and through whom he has worked and make them the subjects of his grace. He rejoices to deliver them from suffering and from the wrath that is to fall upon the disobedient. He makes his children his agents in the accomplishment of this work, and in its success, even in this life, they find a precious reward. But what is this compared with the joy that will be theirs in the great day of final revealing? Now we see through a glass darkly but then face to face. Now we know in part, but then we shall know even as we also are known. See 1 Corinthians 13, 12. It is the reward of Christ's workers to enter into his joy. That joy, to which Christ himself looks forward with eager desire, is presented in his request to his Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am. John 17, 24. The angels were waiting to welcome Jesus as he ascended after his resurrection. The heavenly host longed to greet again their loved commander, returning to them from the prison house of death. 
Eagerly they pressed about him as he entered the gates of heaven. But he wavered them back. His heart was with the lonely, sorrowing band of disciples whom he had left upon Olivet. Yet is still with the struggling children on earth who have the battle with the destroyer yet to wage. Father, he says, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am. Christ's redeemed ones are his jewels, his precious and peculiar treasure. They shall be as the stones of a crown, the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Zechariah 9.16, Ephesians 1.18 In them he shall see of the travail of a soul, and shall be satisfied. Isaiah 53.11 and will not his workers rejoice when they too behold the fruit of their labors? The Apostle Paul, writing to the Thessalonian convert, says, What is our hope, our joy, our crown of rejoicing? Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ that is coming? For ye are our glory and joy. 1 Thessalonians 2, 19, 20. And he exhorts the Philippian brethren to be blameless and harmless, to shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Philippians 2, 15, 16. Every impulse of the Holy Spirit leading men to goodness and to God is noted in the books of heaven. And in the day of God, every one who has given himself as an instrument for the Holy Spirit's working will be permitted to behold what his life has wrought. Wonderful will be the revealing as the lines of holy influence with their precious results are brought to view. What will be the gratitude of souls that will meet us in the heavenly courts as they understand the sympathetic, loving interest which has been taken in their salvation? All praise, honor, and glory will be given to God and to the Lamb for our redemption. But it will not detract from the glory of God to express gratitude to the instrumentality He has employed in the salvation of souls ready to perish. The redeemed will meet and recognize those whose attention they have directed to the uplifted Savior. What blessed converse they will have with these souls. I was a sinner, it will be said, without God and without hope in the world, and you came to me and drew my attention to the precious Savior as my only hope, and I believed in him. I repented of my sins and was made to sit together with the saints in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Others will say, I was a heathen in heathen lands. You left your friends and comfortable home and came to teach me how to find Jesus and believe in him as the only true God. I demolished my idols and worshiped God, and now I see him face to face. I am saved, eternally saved, ever to behold him whom I love. I then saw him only with the eye of faith, but now I see him as he is. I can now express my gratitude for his redeeming mercy to him who loved me and washed me from my sins in his own blood. Others will express their gratitude to those who fed the hungry and clothed the naked. When despair bound my soul in unbelief, the Lord sent you to me, they say, to speak words of hope and comfort. You brought me food for my physical necessities, and you opened to me the word of God, awakening me to my spiritual needs. You treated me as a brother. You sympathized with me in my sorrows and restored my bruised and wounded soul so that I could grasp the hand of Christ who has reached out to save me. In my ignorance, you taught me patiently that I had a Father in heaven who cared for me. You read to me the precious promises of God's word. You inspired me faith that he would save me. My heart was softened, subdued, broken, as I contemplated the sacrifice which Christ had made for me. I became hungry for the bread of life, and the truth was precious to my soul. I am here, saved, eternally saved, ever to live in his presence and to praise him who gave his life for me. What rejoicing there will be as these redeemed ones meet and greet those who have had a burden in their behalf, and those who have lived not to please themselves, but to be a blessing to the unfortunate who have had so few blessings, how their hearts will thrill with satisfaction. They will realize the promise, Thou shalt be blessed, for they cannot recompense thee, 
for thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. Luke 14:14. 14, 14. Thou shalt delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Isaiah 58, 14. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 6, pages 305 to 312.